How's it going guys? Welcome back to Maker's Muse. My name is Angus and today we are looking at the Cubicon Single, the single largest 3D printer I've reviewed so far. Let's see what it's like. So the Cubicon single is made in Korea by a company called High Vision and it's a machine that's priced at around four and a half thousand Australian dollars which makes it the most expensive machine I've reviewed so far. But what do you get for your money? Well for a start the whole thing weighs 24 kilos and as we know with 3D printers or anything mechanical the heavier the more sturdy. So this machine is so heavy it's actually too big for a little stand I've got it on. And they actually even have a built-in leveling bubble so you know if your machine's completely level, which is really, really neat. So clearly from the outset, the Cubicon is a professional machine. It's not something you're gonna buy for your bedroom if you're looking at 3D printing as just a hobby. These machines are aimed at schools or institutions or places where they need a 3D printer that is dead reliable but not as expensive as something like a Stratasys U-Print which will set you back around $30,000 or roughly five or six times as much as one of these. The build volume for the Cubicon single is 240 by 190 by 200 millimeters and the machine can print ABS, PLA or TPU, flexible materials with a specially designed print head. But the thing that really sets the Cubicon apart from every other 3D printer I've ever tested is it has an actively heated build chamber. So if you're printing ABS parts, that means you can print massive ABS parts with zero warping or very, very close to zero warping, and it doesn't stop there. The Cubicon is completely automatic, to the point where I've never seen this printer in my testing, I've run through almost a kilo of plastic, I've never seen it start a print, because I've literally hit print and walked away, and come back sometime later to check up on it, but I've never actually been there at the first steps of the print. And that's really unnatural to me, because I'm used to 3D printers failing quite often, whereas with the Cubicon, I've only had one failure, and that was kind of my fault. But we'll go into that in a minute. So I touched on the automatic calibration of the Cubicon a little bit, but let's go into it in a bit more depth. What does it actually mean? Does it have, you know, a guided bed leveling like the MakerBot 5th Gen has, or does it have something a bit more automatic like the Robox? Well, yes, the nozzle will actually touch off at various points on the bed, but get this, the bed in the Cubicon is motorized. It has an auto tilt mechanism that is literally driven by a motor. Freaking crazy. So this machine, I have not calibrated once. I got it out of the box, loaded some ABS into it, which was pretty easy by the way, and literally hit print. This does have a slight downside though. Kicking off prints on the Cubicon aren't as fast as kicking off prints on a lower end machine that just starts printing straight away. It does have to run through the calibration sequence that takes roughly five to 10 minutes depending on what you're doing and it does have to warm up the whole chamber because it's an actively heated chamber when you're putting ABS and that does take some time too. It also means the machine is quite power hungry, not as much as like a Fortis Stratasys system but definitely more than your standard run of the mill WAN How i3 PLA machine. So again, this machine is not designed for people like me in my bedroom printing or maybe people like me because I'm a freak with 3D printing but it's designed for institutions, schools, places where you need a 3D printer that is 100% reliable. So let's see what sort of print you get off it. So if you've seen my slicer video I did recently, I designed a torture test to test out slices on low-end printers. But I thought, what the hey, let's print it on the Cubicon. And wow, the quality of this print is phenomenal. And just keep in mind that I printed the second one with zero support. So the bridging, the, the fine details of the text, and this, particularly the peak of the, the point, most 3D printers will melt that. And in this case, it had no issues. And what's even more interesting is I tried my warp test, the Warpinator 5000, which is renowned to just warp 100% guaranteed when you're printing an ABS. And this is it off the Cubicon. And yes, right at the edges, there's a tiny bit of warping, but this is over 150 millimeters long and print an ABS, no raft on the Cubicon, and it's almost dead flat. And let's just explore that a little bit more. No raft printing. So the Cubicon has a dead flat, smooth, Garolite or G10 uh, type build surface, so that heats up quite hot, and the parts in ABS stick to it really well. But after you print, you let the machine cool down completely, and the parts literally just come off. You don't need to attack it with a scraper. It does come with some tools and a cute little toolbox, but to be brutally honest, 
I literally would just let it cool down and take the parts out, no issue. And for the final test, I wanted to see how well it could print detailed, accurate parts for fully articulated models. So this is Codsworth from Fallout 4, designed by one of my friends on Thingiverse. And it's fully articulated, the whole thing moves, and the entire thing was printed on the Cubicon with pretty much no issues. Some parts I did need to employ a raft because the surface contact area was so small, but for the rest, I mean, the detail is absolutely phenomenal. And the strength of the parts and the joins, dead on. You know, perfect amount of friction, but I'm not worried about breaking them. The parts are really strong. And I've never come across a 3D printer in my line of work that prints this well in ABS unless it's been something like a Stratasys system, which, for, let's, let's be honest, no one can afford. The only thing the Cubicon single doesn't have that the higher-end Stratasys systems do is dissolvable support. But to be honest, the support material it generates is really good from the Cubic Creator software, so unless you're trying to do really intricate things where you can't get at the support material, you're not going to have an issue. But what if you turn support completely off? I mean, I tried this file, which is a castle torture test, which my friend uh, Joel at 3D Printing Nerd has been testing, and this is printed with no support as well, and the spiral staircase is phenomenal, and it didn't need support to do it. And that just goes to show how much better higher-end hardware can reproduce 3D prints. So often a concern when printing with ABS is it does have a smell to it usually, so people are a bit worried that the petroleum-based plastic that ABS is can actually possibly be harmful for your health, and it just it doesn't smell so good. Again, High Vision has covered that with this. A fully replaceable carbon and HEPA filter. So it literally just slides into the printer and the machine runs a fan and exhaust through it and this machine has zero odour when it's printing. No smell at all, possibly due to how well it manages the printing temperatures, but either way, you wouldn't even know it's running apart from the slight sounds it makes. It does make some sound, I mean all 3D printers make sound with the, the motors moving, but there is no smell from this machine when printing an ABS. Just sweet. So I mentioned I did have one or two failures and that was my fault basically because it is a smooth surface on the bed. You can't print parts that have a very small contact area because as they get taller, they will inevitably probably get knocked off. And I tried printing my death claw parts all in one go with a massive nest. It did really well. It went like, it was a 30 hour print. It got about 25 hours in, if not more. But then one of the parts did fall over. So some of the parts had finished, but the larger part, the uh, torso, knocked over, vibrated, I don't know, um, and then it didn't work unfortunately. So if you are printing things that have a small contact area at the bottom, consider rotating them or adding some more details like the brim settings you can turn on in the Cubic Creator software to allow you to print these more successfully. So you can print the Cubicon directly from your computer via the USB port, it's a standard printer USB cable, or you can print via the included SD card. And that's what I chose to do. So the QB Creator software will export an, a .hvs file, which basically is just G-code. I proved that by opening it up in Simplify 3D, and it will let you save it onto your SD card so you can print remotely, add it to your printing queue, and then print it via the SD card on the printer. One thing I didn't like about the Cubicon is the interface knob. I found it quite flimsy feeling and a little bit unresponsive at times. For a machine that is so well built and so premium I suppose it just doesn't it's your interface with the, the machine so it feels like it could be higher quality but that's a very small thing to pick on and I'm actually struggling with this machine because yes it's four and a half thousand Australian dollars but it replaces machines which were thirty thousand Australian dollars three or so years ago so if you're a school like a high school or even a university or other educational institution and you're looking to have a 3D printer that you can literally press print and walk away with no concerns, I would 100% consider the Cubicon. I have been super impressed with it. I'm really sad that I have to send it back, to be honest. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and a huge thanks to 3D Printing Studios for sending me through the Cubicon so I could test it out. If you're interested in buying one in Australia, go to cubicon.com.au, tell them Angus sent you, and I highly recommend this machine to anyone who can afford it and can justify getting a dead set, rock solid, reliable 3D printer. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more 3D printing content, feel free to subscribe, it helps me out a lot. And I look forward to seeing you again shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later.